Here we're going to solve a nice little equation over the natural numbers. So our goal is to find all natural numbers a and b satisfying the equation a plus 6b equals 3ab. So if you consider 0 to be a natural number, then a equals b equals 0 is clearly a solution to this. So we will either not include 0 as a natural number or look for all solutions that are not equal to 0. We're going to use the following tool from elementary number theory, which we will prove. So for all integers n, the GCD of n and n minus 2 is 1 if n is odd and it's 2 if n is even. So obviously if n is even, then n minus 2 is even, which means that 2 must divide both of those. But if they're odd, then these things are co-prime. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. So the proof of this tool is fairly simple. Um, it goes like this. So let's suppose that D equals the GCD of N and N minus 2. So now that tells us that D divides N and D divides N minus 2. And I should say that I'm doing maybe a few steps here that I wouldn't really need to do if I had done all the work that would happen in an elementary number theory class. But just to be thorough, we're going to do a couple of extra steps here. So the fact that D divides N, that means N equals D times P for some natural number P. And the fact that D divides N minus 2, that means that N minus 2 equals D times Q for some, and I should say integer Q here. So here we have P and Q are integers because in this case we're working over the integers. Great. Now the next thing that I want to do is subtract these two equations from each other in order to get like kind of two isolated. So we'll do this equation minus this equation. So let's see what that gives us. We have n minus n minus 2. So that's the difference of the left hand side of these equations equals dp minus dq. But now notice simplifying this left hand side gives us 2 equals d times the quantity p minus q. But now reading this off we see that D divides 2. In other words, the greatest common divisor of these two numbers must divide the number 2. But since 2 is prime, that only gives us two possibilities for D. So that tells us that D equals 1 or D equals 2. And now we're essentially done. So if n is even, then n minus 2 is even. So they're automatically both divisible by 2. And in fact, they can't divis be divisible by anything bigger than 2 because of what we've shown here. And then if n is odd, then n minus 2 is odd. And so they cannot be divisible by 2, which means they're only divisible by 1. And that makes 1 their GCD. OK, so we've proved this tool. And now we're going to move on to our main objective. In other words, solving this equation among the natural numbers, a plus 6b equals 3ab. So the first thing that we're going to do is rewrite this guy so that all of the b's are on one side of the equation. So let's go ahead and do that. We have a equals um, 3ab minus 6b. OK, good. Now we can take a greatest common factor out of that right hand side. Let's see what that gives us. So the greatest common factor here will be 3b. So we have a equals 3b times a minus 2. Now we want to use our tool. And since our tool has two cases here, if n is odd and n is even, that means we're going to need to break this apart into two cases. So let's go ahead and do that. So case number one is a is odd. Great. But now if a is odd, just like we showed over here, we have the GCD of a and a minus 2 is 1. In other words, these are co-prime. But what that tells us is that because a divides the left-hand side of the equation, a must divide the right-hand side of the equation. But because these are co-prime, a cannot divide a minus 2, which means a must divide 3b. So that gives us a divides 3b. Great. 
But now what we can do is use the definition of divisibility to say that this means 3b equals m times a, where m is just like the natural number that makes that happen. Okay, good. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is take this result and insert it up here into this equivalent equation to our goal and see what that gives us. So we'll replace 3b with m times a. So that gives us a equals m times a times a minus two. Now we can go ahead and cancel a from both sides of the equation because we've already discussed that a is not equal to zero in this setup. So if we cancel here, we're left with the number one. If we cancel here, we're left with m times a minus two. So we have one equals m times a minus two. But what that tells us is that m equals one and a minus two equals one. In other words, a equals three. Let's talk our way through that. So we know that a is, is a natural number, which tells us that it is one or larger. And then since it's one or larger and b is also a natural number, that makes m a natural number. But if m is a natural number, it's one or larger, so this bit is positive, which means this bit also has to be positive, which means they both have to be one because those are the only two natural numbers that you can multiply to get one, which is on the left-hand side. So now if we've got a equals three and m equals one, we can go ahead and plug that up here and that gives us three b equals three. In other words, b equals one. And that is our only solution under the assumption that A is odd. Now I'll move on to the next case, which is if A is even. So let's go ahead and do that. So case two, A is even. And here I'll write A equals two C, where C is some natural number. Okay, fantastic. But now just like we did before, we'll insert this equation back into our original setup. So here we have 2c equals 3b times 2c minus two. Okay, good. Now we can like divide both sides by two and that's gonna give us c equals 3b times c minus one. And now our result, which is very, very similar to this, shows that the GCD of n and n minus one is always equal to one. So by the same argument we had over here, we see that since C divides the left-hand side of the equation, it must divide the right-hand side of the equation. And then since it is co-prime with C minus one, we know that C must divide three B. Great. But now from here, we can say immediately um, that 3b equals n times c, just like we did right here. Now what we'll do is go ahead and take this and plug it back into the equation, which is right above. So that's gonna give us c equals n times c times c minus one. But now we can cancel the c's from both sides of the equation, like kind of for the same reason that we did before. And that's gonna leave us with a one on the left-hand side. That'll leave us with n times c minus one on the right-hand side. But the only natural number solutions to that are n equals one and c equals two. Okay, great. But now if we take n equals one and c equals two, and throw it into this equation that we have right above, we get 3b equals two. But since b must be a natural number, in other words, a whole number, we know that there is no solution to this. So let's go ahead and write that down. No solution with b a natural number, which means we have no solution in this second case. So just to reiterate, in the first case, we got the solution A equals three and B equals one. In the second case, there was no solution. And that's a good place to stop.